Every year, Washington, D.C. looks forward to the State of the Union Address. It's the one night of the year when the president heads over to the People's House. A network television blows out their shows and takes them live. Sometimes it's boring to watch. Other times we get a little drama. And God bless America. Thank you very much. Now, we're not sure where Biden's going with this address tonight, but we do know Biden's been working on it since November. That's over three months for one speech. This thing better be good. Here's what the binder said the speech was going to be about. This is going to be a Joe Biden speech. And when you hear it, that's what you're going to hear. OK, I can listen to the binder explain Biden all day. So much insight. But what is a Biden speech? Well, a Biden speech is a story. And that's what you're going to hear tonight. The greatest story ever told. What he needs to do is tell a story. Joe Biden is an amazing storyteller. I mean, you sit in the Oval Office, Crane can tell you, and he can storytell for six hours. He needs to do that in the speech tonight. Biden may not be a great president, but man, is he a great storyteller. Now, his stories aren't true. That doesn't matter. Old politicians know that people don't want to hear the truth. The truth hurts. People want to hear a story because a story doesn't have to be true. It's just a story. And Biden's built his whole career around telling stories that aren't true. So the best story that Joe's ever told and primetime's producers have been digging through the crates all day was the story of Corn Pop, which might be the greatest Biden story of all time. He didn't plagiarize it. It didn't exactly happen the way he tells it, but the story's got everything. And we know this because Primetime just uncovered brand new details about the Corn Pop story that have never been reported before. This is the speech he should be giving. The story of Corn Pop tells us everything we need to know about Joe Biden. The man, the myth, the legend. Let us begin. Joe Biden was the only white lifeguard in Wilmington. Corn Pop was a bad dude. And he ran a bunch of bad boys. And I did. He, and back in those days, to show how things have changed, one of the things you had to use, if you used pomade in your hair, you had to wear a bathing cap. And so he was up on the board, wouldn't listen to me. I said, hey, Esther, you, off the board, or I'll come up and drag you off. Well, he came off, and he said, I'll meet you outside. My car, this was mostly, these were all public housing behind it. My car, there was a gate out here. I parked my car outside the gate. And I, he said, I'll be waiting for you. He was waiting for three guys in straight razors. Not a joke. Joe may not be at the Delaware pool tonight, surrounded by straight razors and gangs out to get him. But he will be in Capitol Hill, where instead of razors, Republicans will have subpoenas. Now, Kevin McCarthy may as well be Joe's new corn pop. Because if McCarthy doesn't clean out the pomade in his hair and stop pouncing on the Biden crime family, it's going to get very messy for the big guy. And if not, McCarthy Gates has greasy hair, too. He's Corn Pop's understudy. Joe's already feeling the pressure. And we all know what happens when Joe thinks someone's out to get him. There's a guy named Bill Wright, Mouse, the only white guy, and he did all the pools. He was the mechanic. And he cut off a six-foot length of chain. He folded up. He said, you walk out with that chain. And you walk to the car and say, you may cut me, man, but I'm going to wrap this chain around your head. I said, you kidding me? He said, no, if you don't, don't come back. And he was right. So I walked out with the chain. And I walked up to my car. And they had, they, in those days, you used to remember the straight race, you'd bang them on the curb, get them rusty, put them in a rain barrel, get them rusty. Who hasn't put a razor in an old rain barrel? We hope Joe doesn't show up to the State of the Union with a six-foot chain. Maybe Xi Jinping may need to see Joe with a chain. Maybe if Joe shows the chain, no more balloons. How much of this chain thing is true anyway? Well, it turns out there was a character witness, and his name is Mouse. When Joe told Corn Pop to stop, don't bounce on the board, Joe used some, not only Esther, but he used some French language. OK? <laughs> you know I me. Mean? Corn Pop, I think, went on when the pool came out. So they start instigating Joe. They said, Joe, you're going to get your A whip. 
he's going to cut you. Joe got nervous, but he stood his ground. Corn Pop wasn't after him. Corn Pop put fear into him. Everybody else, Chop Smiley, Merck Wiggins, all of them put fear into him. Joe barely speaks English, but he knows French. We didn't know Joe knew French. But Joe was improvising that day. Corn Pop never saw it coming. It wasn't just Corn Pop. Growing up, Chop Somali, Merck Wiggins were flanking Biden from the sides. Doesn't that kind of remind you of what's going through Joe's head today? You got Democrats right now all over Joe's job. Gavin Newsom, Liz Warren, Bernie coming for the lifeguard stand, trying to snatch his whistle. Not even Kamala likes him. She thinks he's racist. And his old boss, Barack, is jealous of him. Joe hasn't made a lot of friends in Washington. And now the FBI's going through his stuff. He's all alone in Washington, just like he was at the pool in Wilmington. Joe knows better than anybody. First thing you need to do, apologize. Sometimes saying sorry is the only thing that fixes it. I looked at him, but I was smart then. I said, first of all, I said, when I tell you to get off the board, you get off the board, and I'll kick you out again. But I shouldn't have called you, Esther Williams. I apologize for that. I apologize, but I didn't know that apology was going to work. He said, you apologize to me? I said, I apologize for that, not for throwing you out, but I apologize for what I said. He said, okay, close the straight razor, and my heart began to beat again. So Joe Biden should go out tonight and say sorry. It brought corn pox temperature down. It's going to work with us, trust me. I'm sorry for calling you Ultramaga. I'm sorry about calling you Neanderthal. Sorry about Afghanistan, inflation, the border, and my bad about the balloon. That would send a shock right through Washington, just like it did in Wilmington, Delaware. When Joe came here, it changed, because we showed Joe that we could accept white people. I took Joe by the hand, took him over Riverside. I told Joe, have a seat. I said, now, if a roach come on you, if you get a marinated jar with some cool air, if, if, if the kids come up and sit in your lap, just smile and say, everything going to be all right. That's what we're going to see tonight. Joe Biden's going to smile and say everything's all right. Biden doesn't have many wins to tout tonight. But we give credit where credit's due. He fixed race relations that day in Wilmington. And he did it as the only white lifeguard at a black pool. And this is one career win he didn't have to apologize for. Joe tonight could unite the country like he united the pool in Wilmington. And it'll be something everyone will remember. Generations later, the folktale of Biden's State of the Union might even be recreated. This pool acts as an inspiration to us. He was basically saying, stay woke, before millennials were saying, stay woke. There was like a leader named Popcorn, right? Well, in the book, he says Popcorn. Oh, we found, oh, Mouse, Mouse corrected it. It's Corn Pop. So Corn Pop was diving off of that thing. He kept bouncing really hard and diving in. And our vice president said, you can't do that. And then he said, Oh, you look like Esther Williams. So Corn Pop was going to pop this corn. <laughs> okay, so some of these details are getting a little hazy. But the point is always going to be there. Joe Biden didn't lie. He just told a story of the night of the State of the Union. Everybody will be entertained. At the end of it all, Joe may even learn something from it himself. By the way, you know, I sit on the stand and it get hot. I got a lot of, I got hairy legs that turn, that, 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 that turn uh, um, blonde in the sun. And the kids used to come up and reach in the pool and rub my leg down so it was straight and then watch the hair come back up again. They'd look at it. So I learned about roaches. I learned about kids jumping on my lap. And I've loved kids jumping on my lap. So jump on Joe's lap, America. Rub his hairy legs. You're safe. He's got a story to tell you. Just watch out for Chop Somali. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.